I love Audible. I'm a huge reader, but I always want to read while I'm doing things you're not supposed to be reading while you're doing them, like driving, like walking. (laughs) It can be dangerous, you know? So I really love to use Audible. Yeah, Audible is great. Um, I have been really interested in this book, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. That's probably going to be my next Audible experience. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love and something new to discover. Try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. Welcome. This is part two of a two-part recap for Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. We just cannot shut up about these people. Thank you so much for being here. Enjoy the show. So Monica's house. Okay, so now we get to go Uh, to Monica's house for the first time. She's in like a tiny little house, which I love. This is a situation where I'm loving a poor housewife. Same. I'm like, this is the version of Gina that I want. (laughs) Yes. You know? So we have Monica, and she's with her mom. Like, they have like their own... They're doing their own sitcom, by the way, in this house. This is a whole different show. This is like... Like, this is a 19... The show that came out in 1989 on TGIF. It's like Monica Monica and her mom and the kids, okay? Yes. So, and, and they're like... She's, she's, help, doing, she's doing orders. Or and her mom's like, honey, how many Swaddles. orders do I need to help you with today? And she's like, just 30 today, mom. And she's like, huh, I'm going to be very helpful, aren't I? You're doing your nails, mom. Yeah, I'm doing my nails instead of working. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do my nails. Am I being helpful, honey? All right, you're laying it on a little thick. But I'm liking it, especially it. for a first improvised scene. You know? Yeah. And Monica's like, so, how's Nana? And Linda's like, oh, she's good. You know, she's actually super sweet. Oh, really? Because she's, like, normally so mean to you. She's like, yeah, well, you know, she's high maintenance, but that's okay. We like her. So then um, we find out. They're talking about their grandma, right? Her yeah. mom. Linda's mom. Yeah. And so Monica is saying, uh, Monica says that she's 50% Colombian, 50% Portuguesa, and uh, that makes her feisty, feisty, feisty. And she was born in Boston, and then she wound up in Salt Lake City 10 years ago. And then her, when she moved to Salt Lake City, her mom followed, Linda followed her, and now uh, her Linda and Nana, Olivia, live three minutes away. Yes. Um, and now she works, wait, now I live current, now I live right by my grandmother and my mom is like two minutes away or whatever. And she has four girls and they know they're Portuguese and yeah, they know their Portuguese grandmother. That's what she's saying. So I wrote then, so much in shorthand. I'm so sorry. I'm, <laughs> I think my brain was being frazzled. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> I know. It's just like random letters coming on. So they're all, we see clips of all of the ladies, two the daughters, ago. the grandma and Linda in the house. Okay. It's like two days ago. And Linda's asking one of her daughters, do you miss Boston, hon? And Monica's like, mom, don't bring up Boston. She gets sad. And Abuelita's like, don't yell. I don't like loud. I don't like loud. Talk Talk nice. Talk soft. But she has like a knife. She has a knife in her hand. She's like, I like soft. I like soft. Not loud. Soft. And Linda's (laughs) like, like, sorry, mom. And she goes, no, 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 no. (laughs) No. Like, should we take the knife away from her? Please have Olivia on as much as possible, Bravo. I like, make every episode about Olivia. The angry abuela. I fucking loved that. So Monica's like, take the knife. So Monica says, yeah, we're one, all one big, nice Portuguese family. So they do prayers, and Linda's saying, um, Father, please bless this food to be good to us. Callate with the Lord. You're so loud to the Lord. Quiet. <laughs> Soft, soft. So, um, so now we're back in present, and Monica's, you know, so Monica and her mom are making these swaddles, and Monica's saying how uh, when she was married, she didn't have to worry about a job or anything because her spouse supported her, and so, but during that time, she started a, a company called Brea Baby, 
uh, which is like baby swaddles and blankets and crib sheets and things like that. And it was just like a hobby. But now that she's getting divorced, it's actually the thing that is bringing her income. And um, now, you know, she doesn't have the same resources that she had when she was married and she's starting from from scratch. Yes. So then her daughter, Brie, comes in and um, she's helping them. And she's like, "Um, okay, mom, you can go back to painting your nails now. And Brie's like, mom, how do we do this? I don't remember. We used to pay the neighbor kids to do this. She's like, oh, my God, I'm on my own with this shit. Like, everybody's useless. Okay, guys, so I have to tell you something. And her mom's like, oh, my God, tell me you're pregnant. Are you pregnant? (laughs) Is she pregnant? (laughs) Mom, I'm not pregnant. You have to have sex. And last time I checked, it's been a minute. Okay. Okay, guys, brace yourselves. I'm going on a girl's trip and I need your help with the kids. Okay. Because I'm going to be gone for like three days. And Linda's like, oh, fuck this shit. I knew I never should have left Boston. Yeah. She's like, (gasps) how long do I have to spend taking care of children? I'm good for two hours and then my head swells. I'm like, I hear you, girl. So basically, they're talking about like the coordination of it, like being up early in the morning. And Linda's like, oh, bloody hell. Do I need to be here after the, after the Brie leaves for in the morning? I have to be here at 7 in the morning? Okay, you know what? Fuck all this. How about we put some hot, a stack of Hot Pockets on the counter and your kids can figure it out themselves? So when you're a waiter, there's something called um, anticipation. Like you're supposed to anticipating needs. You're supposed mm-hmm. to anticipate Or when you're Carly your needs. Simon. <sighs> What? She has a song called Anticipation. Go oh. on. I'm sorry. Don't so you're me. supposed to anticipate needs, right? That's like a step of service. And as a customer in this restaurant called Salt Lake City Housewives, I was like, I need some trauma because I'm learning that that's very important. I need to hear some trauma. And here comes Monica with her trauma. Oh, so she's like, really good. Guys, you know, like, I've never really even been on a girl's trap, but I'm going on a girl with a bunch of girls I don't even know, and I'm nervous, because, like, I'm out of my league. And the mom goes, in terms of, she goes, like, I went into City Creek, and I went into the Louis Vuitton store, and I, like, bought a bag. Because, like, I just feel like I want to have something nice around them, and, like, I just don't want to show up with nothing. Girl. <laughs> City Creek, first of all, buying a Louis Vuitton bag as your trauma is the funniest shit I've ever heard, okay? And I know people are going to be like, that's a real thing, feeling in fear. I get it. I get what it means. But it's still hilarious. It was hilarious. And you don't, none of these housewives go to City Creek Louis Vuitton store to get their bags. They go to Canal Street (laughs) in New York City to get their fake ass bags. Like, who are we kidding? Someone needs to teach this girl the ropes. This was amazing. And just the way she said it, like the way her face was like, like I just didn't want to show up like nothing. Like I wanted something to feel nice. So Linda's like, oh, I know what I know what you mean. I, I do, you know, like I get it. And she goes, and I hate that I feel like that. And it's like so stupid. But like, oh, why do I feel like that? That's like not me. I'm like not that person. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't care. Trauma. And- the mom's like, oh, but you've got so many good qualities, too. You shouldn't base your worth on money. And Monica's like, yeah, I know. And, like, you taught me that. Like, I should know that. And so she tells us that her mom was a single mom. And she, okay, this is where I, this is where we go, where everything is twisty and turny, right? So she uh, goes, yeah. we're on one road, and then, and my Shyamalan. Okay, so she's like, so my mom was a single mom, and the last time I saw my dad was when I was four. And they got into this huge fight, and he just left. And then he never came back. I don't even know what he looks like. If he's dead, if he's alive, if I have siblings. All I know is he was gay, and he had a boyfriend and moved to Florida, and that's the last we saw. I was like, what? <laughs> Because then we all we all know what the fight is about, right? We all know the mom caught him. <laughs> Haley Joel like, Osment caught him. You know, this is I see gay people. It's like, Damn it! This is I think twist. why I'm. <laughs> this is why I think I'm really enjoying Monica right off the bat because she has gay male DNA literally in her. <laughs> like, my father was a gay man. <laughs> I just am expecting it. It's like twist after twist with this. I know. Her first episode is like, and I testified against Jen Shaw, and I was the leak the whole time. You're like, what? I was expecting this like story of this guy who was like a womanizer and da 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 da. My dad was getting moved to Florida. Like, he's off. He's off in like Kissimmee, Florida, just like with his gay lover. 
looking like running a like a guns and american flag store <laughs> like i just i love every bit of it and there is a part that you know of course like listening to her talk about being insecure about being poor around rich people like of course like i get the um I get that, you know, like when we were little kids, my parents went broke during the real estate crash in the 80s. And my mom was a country club lady. Like she would play tennis with all the rich ladies on the West Side. That was like their thing. They were like snotty rich bitches playing tennis. That's where I learned my love of housewives. And they lost everything in the real estate thing. And we were just like overnight poor. And my mom ended up becoming the lady who ran the snack bar at the country club and like had to serve all the snot. Like I will never forget my mom, no matter what I ever say to complain, I will never forget my mom being a fucking hero in that moment and like seeing what she went through and stuff. So when I hear this stuff, of course I know what Monica is talking about, you know, and I totally get it. It's just hilarious because what she doesn't realize yet, her big twist, they're all poor. Yeah. None of these people have money. They are all fucking lying to you. There is nothing for you to cry about. Get your ass down to some Canal Street. Start getting a cricket and start printing out Versace logos and getting that shit cut and just ironing it on sweatshirts, okay? Because they're all fakers. Yeah. And so the mom gives her a cute little pep talk. And also her daughter. Her daughter is like, Mom, it's okay. Who cares? And basically, Linda's like, listen... Listen, you've got, you, you're doing better than I did. Okay, you're married. You have a bunch of kids. There's no man in your life that's constantly playing Gloria Stefana Madonna. And you're just ahead of the curve. <laughs> Listen, funny and gorgeous. If your father was here right now, I'm sure that he would say to you, Ga ga goo goo ga 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 um shoo ba sha sha ga ga. I mean, Romance. listen. You're doing better than me, hon. You know, you never had to do weekly performances of Gypsy with your husband <laughs> in the awesome. living room. What is wrong with us? <laughs> so she's like, you did better than me, kid. You got married. You have kids. I mean, listen, so far you're ahead of the curve, at least as far as our family goes. I mean, at least you're not as poor as the rest of us. Just be you. <laughs> funny, smart, gorgeous. Mom! <laughs> Sorry, I meant gorgeous. Did I say gorgeous? <laughs> Where did that even come from? So then um, Whitney and Justin go to a restaurant called Emigration. I have <laughs> I <can't>. never. <laughs> <laughs> this show, it's like The Simpsons. What's going on with it? Is this show just emigration shit up? Like, what are they talking about? Who starts a rest- <laughs> names a restaurant Emigration? It just is so. Okay, I got to look it up. Emigration SLC restaurant. That is just one of the funniest things. Emigration Cafe. Sorry. Emigration Cafe. It doesn't have Yelp reviews. Does Yelp even hit it there? Oh, my God. Oh, so fucking funny. Yeah, it has 3.4. 3.4 re- for its reviews. Um, let's see a review. Um, not a good experience. Granted, we were 11. But uh, Monday. Oh, she, it's party of 11. I thought she meant like I was there when I was 11. But <laughs> a Monday Granted, night. we were 11. But still. <laughs> I mean, no. granted, we're 11 years old. We haven't fully developed our taste. You're, you're not going to give us a fucking menu to color on. We're going to color on your table, immigration. What do you want from us? We're 11. Beer was warm. We ordered apps at the same time. We put in our di- in our dinners. They came out after our meals. Food was not exciting. There are better choices. Yeah. Okay. Well, there are better tables too. I mean, this table was sad. So they went to. They go. They were on double date night with Whitney and Justin, <laughs> and they're meeting Angie and Sean. And he is in skin tight, short, you know, like a uh, flood, f- expecting a flood, as I would say in our day, but just like those like bachelor capris. short pants, capris, yes, tweed. I mean, what is this? What is this he, guy? He Incredible sort of like, figure, but what the yeah. fuck, dude? Yeah, he's sort of like, it's funny because he's wearing a baseball cap, but in my mind, he was dressed like he was in Newsies. And so uh, Angie's like, Angie is like, hey, gorgeous. And Whitney's like, over this summer, Angie and I started reaching out to each other and talking. And then we realized we didn't have to hold our arms like that when we talked, which was great. And it felt like our lives aligned. And Angie and Sean are such a great couple. Our kids love each other. We joke that we want to arrange a marriage between Electra and Brooks. And Lucian. And Lucian. Remember Lucian from last week? No? Okay. (laughs) 
That's like the next step in a friendship, right? Arranging marriages. Huh? No, Terry. <laughs> um, and Angie's like, I looked over and I thought Sean looked so handsome. And, you know, I probably haven't told him that in 11 years because we just don't get out together that much. Um, guys, we can't have Whitney and Angie being friends when they both sound like they're reading off of a cue card. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> like, it's literally too much to recap. So uh, Angie's like happy with she's like points out her necklace. She's like representing with it. And then Justin has he has a necklace with a crystal on and he's like, hey, I'm representing with my crystal. It helps me communicate because Lord knows I need the help. Oh, whoops. This isn't a necklace. It's just the cap of a Hershey's bottle. Sorry about that. <laughs> Ah, Angie says. So Whitney's like, um, <laughs> so we've been through a lot of transitions, right? Let me starting, like me, starting a business. Him, losing his job. Me, unpacking trauma. Him, still not having a job. The point is, we realized we're not, we realized we're not great communicators. And Justin's like, whoa, you threw yourself in there as a cause of the problems? That's a first. <laughs> yeah, because I realized that there were times like where I thought that I told him stuff, but I didn't. <laughs> I just wrote it on paper and threw it in the hot tub. So I Andrew's have to start like... <laughs> writing it on paper. I had to start writing it because I thought I said things, but then it turns out I didn't. <laughs> oh wow! Memory so is just an ongoing issue. Every, with her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Angie's like, "Well, it seems like the crystal is working for both of you." And Sean is like, "Hey, so when you guys start doing things and developing career, you know, it, you know that can make things difficult because you wake up one day and you're like, where's my spouse? Am I right? I'm like, who the hell is this? Did I marry Joanna Gaines? Where the hell happened to Josh Altman with the perm? <laughs> and Angie's like, well, John's he wakes like, up. wow, women working. Am I right? <laughs> Sean. Sean's Sean. like, wow, so, God, you guys should make things difficult. I remember when women driving became legal. And I thought, whoa, keep your kids inside, guys. Like, all right, Does Angie have a career or is she just working in the same job that he is? Like, she owns 10 freaking salons with them and runs it all sounds these like they work together. And a beauty company and stuff. <laughs> He's like, God, it's so crazy because, you know, one day you're a, you're a couple and the next day you you both are, have your different careers at the same time location and yes. job and you see each other all day and you think wow who is this person yeah i never really get to is. see them except for all day long it's really just weird how he words it like when you guys start doing your own things it's like Ooh. so um then we get a uh, women working and sean's like you're like wow i don't even know her right now why does she smell like garlic and yogurt and then she's <laughs> like sometimes he wakes up and you know what does who we're next to an 11 year old because she sleeps in our bed child still sleeping in your room this and it's like not just the child it's it's electra and cilia although they have another dog by the way what was the other dog's name i already forgot its name faust. that dog is not the bed. faust who names our dog faust <laughs> that's these, these fucking people I'm telling faust you. made a deal with the faust devil that is electra. not going to be a good dog i know they don't they don't research the names electra yeah. i mean at least electra is greek but didn't electra have a famous issue with her dad wasn't that like electra's thing well, uh, let's look up her thing. You know what? We should know this. This is important knowledge. This is important. This I feel like podcast. Electra was sort of like the female version of, of Oedipus or something like that. Right? Uh, Electra. Well, it was a film, a superhero film, but we want to know. Um, Electra myth. The character is a highly trained assassin of Greek descent who wields a pair of psi as her trademark weapon. Okay. So in, in Greek mythology, Electra is one of the most popular mythological characters in tragedies. She is the main character in two Greek tragedies. Oh, great branding for your daughter. She is also a central figure. Okay, so she is a vengeful soul in the Libation Bearers. And Okay, so uh, her dad was King Agamemnon, and her mom was Clytemestra. Wow. Talk about Nepo, baby. Um, oh. She murdered her dad, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so Did okay all i mean this is just bad juju but i will say that i don't think it's that electra because that's spelled with a c and this it, electra is spelled with a k and that is the marvel electra that's oh. the superhero no and she's the assassin for hire 
Electra can be spelled with a C or a K. She, I think she also killed oh. uh, Clytemestra too. I could oh, be wrong wow. about this. I'm going through this very quickly. Electra has like, Listen, you know, I'm just be saying, careful. Watch your back, right? What? Watch your back. And all of you, it's like, uh, you know, all of you sitting there driving carpool right now, like, God, Ronnie's really being a dick today. You know what? Look in your back seat and make sure that your son Chucky isn't holding a knife because fucking yeah. people never listen to advice. You know what I'm By saying? By the way, Electra did not kill Clytemestra, but it sounds like Orestes was her um, brother and the brother killed Clytemestra. So like that family, they got to, you know, this is why, you know what? Communication. Whitney is right. You got to have good communication in a family. <laughs> This is all because Electra got a job. <laughs> Electra's hard working at Jamba Juice of Mount Olympus. And uh, everything. <laughs> the husband just woke up one day and was like, oh my God, who are you? Do you spell with your name with a C or a K? <laughs> Literally don't even know anymore. Wow. Wow, Electra. Mm. So, um, by the way, your kid is way too old to sleep in your bed. Stop that. That's fucking... It's not weird, like creepy sexual. I'm not saying anything like that, but that's just very, very bad. It's bad for your marriage. It's bad for your child. It's bad for the world. Let's just stop it. Have your fucking kid get a job, okay? That's yeah. what your kid needs to be doing. Yeah. By the way, I think I got the entire Electra myth wrong. I apologize. Don't write me messages. I'll, I'll rectify in the next one. <laughs> okay. So Whitney's like, I am stopping myself. And <laughs> she puts her hand like, I'm stopping from wondering when and where they have sex. And I'm stopping myself from wondering, because <laughs> Whitney. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't finish the sentence. What was I saying? You were stopping. You're stopping yourself. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're stopping from wondering where they're having sex. Gross. Oh, no. I just started wondering about what is buttered popcorn? <laughs> oh, <laughs> i'm gonna hear like honest wait honest to god i love our connection angie and like i love that we have a mutual mom connection and like i'm gonna cheers to that and angie goes yeah well i love you guys as well she didn't say she loves you she said she loves your connection stop jumping the gun angie yeah okay hey does anyone want to beat a salad um i believe it's a beet salad it's not an invitation to beat a salad Oh, oh, thank God, because I didn't know how to play. <laughs> it's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. I want you to picture Steve Jobs tinkering with a computer in his garage. Walt Disney drawing cartoons for his high school newspaper. Every big moment starts with a big dream. But what happens when that dream turns out to be an even bigger failure? Each week on Wondery's new podcast, The Big Flop, host Misha Brown is joined by different comedians to chronicle some of the biggest failures and blunders in pop culture history. Each episode will have you thinking, why in the world did this get made? From box office flops like Cats the Movie to Action Park, New Jersey's infamous theme park that had countless injuries, many lawsuits, and rides so wild it became known as Class Action Park. Or Quibi, that short-form video platform with an even shorter lifespan. It's a story of a spectacular failure with lots of surprises along the way. Enjoy The Big Flop on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to The Big Flop early and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Get started with your free trial at wondery.com slash plus. Hey listeners, you need to know that Wondery's shocking true crime podcast Over My Dead Body is back for a fourth season, Gone Hunting. This newest season covers the story of Mike Williams, it was Mike's sixth wedding anniversary when he set off on a hunting trip into the gator-infested swamps of North Florida. He figured he'd be back in time to take his wife Denise out to celebrate, but he never came back. Friends and loved ones feared he met his fate through bad luck and a group of hungry alligators, leaving his young family behind. Except that's not what happened at all. And after 17 years, a kidnapping, and the uncovering of a secret love triangle, the truth would finally be revealed. Enjoy Over My Dead Body, Gone Hunting on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of Over My Dead Body early and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Get started with your free trial at Wondery.com slash plus. You guys, I have been in so much pain since the snowball fight. 
And it seemed like that after Heather gave her speech, she really wanted to move forward with everyone there, even though I wasn't quite feeling it was directed towards me. But she was sort of extending an olive branch. Greek. <laughs> Sorry, I had to footnote my own sentence. <laughs> I am so excited for this girl's trip. Are you going? Wait a minute. Is this like all the girls? I haven't heard anything about it. Which is hilarious. And then we get a Angie. The, Angie hasn't heard anything about the girls' trip. <laughs> so Meredith is hosting a girls' trip to Palm Springs, California. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And Angie's like, well, well, I've been nice to Meredith when I've seen her. And Sean goes, yeah, you've done a lot of things for her. Yeah, I supported her fashion show, and I sent people to do the hair. Uh, yeah, we lost a third of revenue in that one location in a day. I mean, huh, God, you should have seen how angry Athena was when I said, sorry, your ladies at the fashion show today. <laughs> and Angie's like, and this is the point of speaking, like, Thanks for nothing, Angie. So now I'm not now to see that I'm not being invited to this. And Whitney's like, what I don't get is this Meredith is planning this whole trip. And the point is to team build and to bond. So tell me, how are you supposed to do that when you are excluding someone? <sighs> she starts doing this like rolling on the river hand movement. And she's like, it's just really bad energy. And I really don't like it. So we have to cleanse it. Cleanse the aura and send it away. Justin's like, why are you, why are you brushing me up? Do, should I move tables? <laughs> Not you. I am sorry. That was bad communication. I can't say things have been that great with Meredith, but and I, but like Heather didn't invite me to her event either, and I had to get invited through Lisa there, and it feels like those two were trying to ice me out. And so Whitney's like, they hate you because you're an asshole to them. Why are you so surprised at this? And she's like, treats everybody like shit. And she's like, I cannot believe I was not invited on a girl's trip. But also notice it's Jen Shaw's closest allies who hate Angie the most. So I still think there's some weird, like, there's something about the Jen Shaw relationship. Well, you know, those girls know how to think long term, Heather and Meredith. And I think that they know damn well that. Jen will be back. Even if this show gets canceled this year, Jen is out in five, and they will for sure reboot Salt Lake City to do a rebound of Jen screaming at everybody. They're going yeah. to. Like, some somehow those girls know that they're still going to stay on Jen's side no matter what. And I think you're right. Angie yeah. turned last year, and they're not going to turn. Yeah. So, basically, Whitney invites Angie to Palm Springs, and Angie's course is so happy. <laughs> California. And Angie's like, well, I do love Palm Springs. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but like, how do you put like a hot tub in your hand? I don't get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now we go to a store called Name Droppers. <laughs> and I think we've been to Name Droppers before. I feel yes. it, it feels familiar. <laughs> it's run by the lady who played, uh, not Blossom, that's Soleil Moon Fry, right? Six. What's a girl who was played the young Bette Midler in Beaches, and then she was the host of Jeopardy for a while, and she My was on the Yalek. Big Bang Theory. Yeah, she's she's played <laughs> by. Uh, she's also playing the lady who owns Name Droppers. <laughs> <laughs> so Heather walks into Name Droppers, the chicest boutique in all of Salt Lake City, and the lady who runs it is so happy to see her, Tiffany. And um, Heather's saying that they're going to go on a, a girls' trip. And uh, Monica is going to uh, meet her there, but she's like, but I get the best stuff, right? So then Monica, by the way, so Heather pulls up in a like murdered out, matted Land Rover. And then I love Monica, that car, don't it you? It was, and you I mean, know, those beautiful. have terrible reliability ratings. Yeah, but you they're know so, that's the manliest so cool thing looking. I ever do is look up cars. I love looking at cars online. I go to Barnes and Noble and read car magazines sometimes. I like love I'm a it. weirdo with that. I love looking at cars. So this one, I love. I loved when she drove up, and and is it, it? I always thought it was like murdered out gray, but is it? Green? Is it like a dark green color? This it looks so black beautiful. to me, but all I know is that Heather had one, and then Monica pulled up in the exact same one, and I'm like, you know, everyone's allowed to spend their money the way they want to, but when you're crying about buying a Louis Vuitton bag, 
but then you're also driving this sick car. I mean, maybe she had it in the in the wedding beforehand, but I was like, mm, girl. Yeah, I mm. think that she was doing well for a long time, and then just rental. poor again, and that's why it's rough. Because yeah. You know, that's why it's that, that could be a she leftover didn't... from the marriage. But I was definitely like, this feels like it doesn't match with the previous scene. Yeah, you never know because you try to keep it up to stay on these shows. So who knows? Yep. She, she might be paying a crazy lease. But I don't think you get a lot for a season one of Housewives. Here's what I say. Why haven't you kept copies of Keys to Jen's house? Not that that's yeah. really a thing anymore. But can't you warm your way back in there and get whatever they didn't repossess? Surely, if you knew that much about Jen, you know where her like hiding spots are you know she's got to know a couple of u-haul warehouse locations <laughs> come on yeah. Monica, do some borrowing girl so they're um they're shopping for clothes for like poolside and everything like that and um heather's telling monica oh these girls don't play they dress up which of course is probably not making monica feel better and she's like, um, if Heather's brunch taught me anything, it's that these ladies will go out of their fashion, go all out with their fashion from head to toe. And my style is more like spit up on the side of my shirt and like probably like goldfish in my hair and like leggings and like sneakers and like running a leak everything. I'm trying though. Mm. And Heather's telling her, I'm here to help you, okay? This is your first girl's trip, and I know these women. She's like, okay, give me some tips then. Well, actually, I'm curious. How are you even friends with Lisa? She's like, um, actually, I met Lisa through Angie K. Surely you're not expecting a twist in this story, right? <laughs> Just not about to be one, so don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. Just a normal <laughs> drama. Well, how do you know Angie K? Well, I met Angie K through Jen, and we've been like friends ever since. Oh, She's that like, was a twist, right? Mini twist. Didn't see that one little coming. Twist, little twist. Little right. twist. Yeah. That was tiny. <laughs> um, so you're not close with her or what? And she goes, actually, I went to high school with Angie K, so I've known her forever, and I'm not going there. Oh, so even though you went to high school, you weren't close? She's like, <laughs> No. I don't have anything to do with her, and I hope she's not coming to Palm Springs. California! Whitney, get out of my scene. Sorry. <laughs> Meredith said she's not inviting her, so I'm hoping she won't be there. And Monica's like, what? Yeah, I don't like her. She just seems catty and jealous and not anyone I want to invest time in. You know who I invest time in? People going to jail for committing <laughs> widespread fraud. I will only invest time in people that I'm pretty sure are defrauding really old people <laughs> so that they die alone and penniless. And Heather's telling us that her feelings are hurt because this woman, uh, Angie, said horrible things that she knows aren't true. And then we go back to Angie's audition last year when she's like, fine, I'm going to really bring it at this finale book party. For Heather, you know what I hear on the streets. Heather is doing Barbie scissor kicks with gents in the beds. And that's why she's sticking up for her. You know, Barbie's scissor kicking in the beds. <laughs> vagina to vagina. I'm like, who? Or is <gasps> who ran this job interview <laughs> that they saw that and were like, you know what? Make her full time. Make her full time. Uh, so Monica's decided that she's going to give, or, or, well, Heather says she's basically going to give Monica the benefit of the doubt. She's not going to be, not going to let Monica be guilty by association. So then Heather's like, oh, so by the way, um, what is your story? I'm sure there's no twists or turns in this, right? And she's like, um, I was raised like Mormon, like kind of Mormon, like kind of raising my daughters in the church as best as I can. Like, I don't know. And Heather's like, hmm, kind of, is that a thing? Kind of? What does kind of mean? And she's like, yeah, like I'm kind of raising my kids in the church. Oh, really? Kind of. Yeah, kind of. So wait. You're Mormon. You should not have had that champagne. Listen, I am like an alcoholic that has just quit drinking, and I'm very judgmental about everybody else's alcohol use, okay? So I'm going to tell you what you can and cannot do as a Mormon, and you cannot drink that champagne. <laughs> well, um, my mom converted to the church, and I was raised in the church, and um, I was married in the temple. Oh, and, and don't I worry, don't worry. There's not a twist coming up, so everybody <laughs> relax. Everyone relax. Relax. But I was excommunicated. And Heather's like, for what? Um, for fucking my brother-in-law for 18 months. <laughs> 
twin. <laughs> I was floored. I was like, oh, she's the thing of like, well, I realized it wasn't for me and I protested. And then they were like, she's like, yeah, I fucked my brother in law. I, <laughs> I just like, imagine Cherry Jones in the village just being is, like, oh, we got him again. <laughs> this was me watching. This was me watching the show. Type, 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 type. type. Wow! <laughs> 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 literally holler so uh, heather's like okay then and monica's like <laughs> yeah you thought you were a bad mormon right <laughs> and heather goes wait shut the fuck up so wait your husband's brother and she goes no my husband has a sister her husband <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, how did you get how did you get caught? She's um, well, I confessed. I saw my bishop. And um, so yeah, I saw him and I was basically kicked out. But my brother-in-law wasn't, because of course they don't kick out the guy. And she goes, Well, like probably like oh, one of the worst experiences in my life besides getting a Louis Vuitton bag, because like I really did feel like so mad and like I thought by like, coming out with it, like I just thought it would be better, and I was just like shunned from everything. And Heather's like, oh, yeah, Scarlet Letter, Scarlet Letter. And uh, she goes, yeah, and to, like, see him not go through anything? Like, what the heck? Um, so this whole thing was cracking me up. I mean, some things it's like. <laughs> it's so fucked wow, up. Wow, you know, I got shunned because I had a Diet Coke and someone saw me and they told everybody on the Mormon Facebook. And then I got shunned. You're like, oh, my God. But to be shocked that you got shunned from the church when you were banging your bro your brother's <laughs> sister's husband. I mean, that shit is just <laughs> hilarious. That's epic. This has to win. I mean, even before we even make nominations, this has to win best casting of the year. I mean, this yeah, is this just is fucking crazy. Brilliant. Yeah. So, um, you know, Monica, they, they're saying how they both have like similar backgrounds and she says like, you know, I'm going to lay my entire past out on the table because the only way the true like power in owning your past is that no one can weaponize it against you ever, which by the way, Good not luck true. with that. That's, yeah, you that's welcome to reality TV. Not true. Yeah. But my favorite thing is she then goes, the first thing I did when I left my council, I went to Victoria's Secret and bought like 30 thongs. <laughs> <laughs> and Heather's like, yeah, because like you can wear panties now, right? I mean, the first time I wore panties, I had to borrow them from my daughter because I didn't have any. I only had like biker shorts since I was 20 years old. I mean, I had the same <laughs> pair since I was 20 years old. So, by the way, as we transition to the next scene, we get, you know, obviously Trixie Monoclackle, but we get a soloist. Did you notice we had a soloist in the choir? It was no. one single voice going, <laughs> and then the whole choir came in. I was like, wow, congratulations, soloists. Yeah, it was like that um, alien blue opera singer lady from The Fifth Element. Do you remember that? Just that kind I of, never saw oh, it. <laughs> um, so it's a great movie. Still, yeah. it's, I think probably would still hold up. So Meredith is showing her kids. So it's a packing <laughs> segment, right? They're all packing kids. to go on this trip. And so Meredith's kids are laying in her lying in her bed watching her. And she's like, <laughs> Mom, that one still has sleeves. <laughs> yeah, Mom, I mean, come on. Yeah, but Mom, Mom, that's a that's a blazer, Mom. Stupid mom. Chloe's like, ooh, I like that when you first when when you first pulled it out, but then you showed the straps, and I'm like, you need to take that back, mom. Ugh, gross. And Brooks, Mom's gross. Brooks is like, it would be sick if you like swam in a surf suit. That would be sick. That would be like a vibe. She's like, um, well, first, I don't have a surf suit. Second of all, we're in the desert, honey. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you can find one in Palm Springs. Don't people surf there? Honey, I just said it was a dancer. <laughs> Chloe and Brooks are like, remember like three years ago when we went to Best Buy to get away from Jen Shaw? Yeah. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, Mom. <laughs> can I be the only person that's like fallen in love with these kids? Oh my, my god, I'm obsessed. I took a photo of I them. I love them now. Just and they're like snot like in like <laughs> like in the best way, in the most complimentary way, like their snotty look just like <sighs> Yeah. They're like cartoons. Mom. 
I am like, I really am like very, very obsessed with Brooks and Chloe. Me together. too. I've Just missed the like, little toddler Brooks. Mom. Little Brooks. Little Brooks has a book coming out. I don't know if you heard about that. Oh, God. Don't make me hate Brooks again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's been five minutes since I've been like standing Brooke. Uh, uh, Brooks, what do you do? What, what's his book? Uh, I don't know. I, th- I just saw like a promo that's like, this is Brooks. <laughs> Didn't he have that like YouTube show where he was interviewing other children from Bravo? Who was that? Was that Brooks? Did he? I feel like it was Book. Hold on. Let's look. Brooks Marks Book. So I put that's Brooks a, and Chloe. That's a tongue tie. Brooks Marks at Brooks Marks Instagram. That is not a book. Okay. Brooksmarks.com. That is not a book. The Art of Mark Brooks. That is not a book. I mean, it is a book. Well, I don't think the book is book. out. I think it just was announced. Oh. Well, yeah. Ugh, thanks a lot, Ben. Thanks for ruining my life. Okay. Interview show. Let me see. Interview show. Growing up reality with Brooks Marks in the know. It's on in the know.com. Brooks Marks, the son of real housewives of Salt Lake City, Meredith Marks. It should be spelled in fellow the know. offspring. <laughs> I'm what? in the know, mother. <sighs> no, not that swimsuit. And that you're stupid. Um, yeah. Okay. I guess. Import, more importantly, we now go over to Mary Cosby, who is in her closet, and her son is there, and she calls the she's calling the Trixie Motel <laughs> to find out about the accommodations. She's like, "Ah, uh, this is uh, this is the Trixie Hotel." They're like, "Motel, yes." And she like, gives us looks at like, like <laughs> a motel. And Robert Junior is just sitting there in a chair, cracking up at her because she's so ridiculous. And they're of course sitting in her closet. You know, yeah, and he's just sitting in the closet chair cracking up, and so she's like, Uh, hotel, motel, <sighs> and we get a merry eye roll. Uh, and uh, Mary is like, So, do you guys have 20, uh, two, uh 2013 Tom Perignon? And he's like, Um, <laughs> no, <And> her <laughs> eyes bulge. She goes, I can't even bulge my eyes the way she does. She just stares at her phone like, I can't even believe this shit hole. That doesn't have <laughs> Dom Perignon for 10 years ago. And she goes, and she goes okay, do you have room service? <laughs> he goes, um, yes, well, we have a full bar. And for our food, we have one to two person shareable pizzas. It's sort of like a cheese board. and But we don't have like a huge menu. <laughs> She's horrified. She's like, okay, thank you. Bye. And she goes, pizza. And they don't even have Dom Perignon. Like, who doesn't have that? You got to pray for me. You got to pray for me, babe. <laughs> pizza? It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. So now we have Lisa packing. And John is uh, walks into the room. And he goes, packing already? Yeah, what, what you think she's, what, she's making origami from her clothes? Of course, she's packing. <laughs> so Lisa's like, yeah. By the way, look at this outfit. Do you die? Do you die? Look, it's like big shoes. They look crazy, but I kind of love them. It's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I didn't die, but when I do, I'm not afraid because I know I'm going to get my own planet with you and all of your shoes. She's like, wow, John, that was so romantic. <laughs> uh, so, you know, the last three trips on we've been have been like the Amadeval Horror Show, John. It's like the Amadeval Horror Show. And he's like, yeah. I can say Amadeval because I'm from New York. Like- <laughs> yeah it's been scary for the both of us she's like yeah it was awful and you know what meredith i know like didn't invite anja and i'm bummed because like i'm not gonna cry <laughs> i just wanted to get it out to open the window open the window John. okay because this trap is a really a, it's gonna be really telling that's like who's really having a fresh start and who's packing things who's who's a fresh start who's a fresh wolf <laughs> I'm I'm gonna predict there's gonna be a little scuffle about the fact that Angie had to get invited by Whitney and not from Lisa, and then Lisa's gonna be like, "Yeah, but you haven't even been taking my calls." I guarantee this is gonna be a minor fight next week. Oh, that's a good prediction. So okay. now we go to the Salt Lake City Airport, and uh, I'm not, and like Mary's arriving, and she's like, "I'm not gonna stand out here; it's cold." And Ryan and I can speak from experience. I'm still like traumatized from standing outside at the Salt Lake City Airport waiting for our Uber. It was so cold. And then um, Mary, everyone's just like arriving, and Chloe's there for some reason. Meredith, 
Red is like, this is my daughter, Chloe. She just wanted to come and see everyone and disapprove of everything that everyone's wearing. Okay, Chloe, have at it. Chloe, I just wanted somebody with about as much money as Monica to be here so you didn't feel uncomfortable on your first trip. Chloe, be poor. Chloe's like, oh my god, I totally wish I could afford something. Okay, bye. <laughs> Best bye. So Lisa's, so then Monica's like, she's Monica's like, I have like so much anxiety. Like I can't be like a 10 at the airport. Like I have a huge fear of flying, but I have tons of zannies in my bag. Mm. So um, they're all hugging. The big news here is that Whitney is not with them because Whitney had texted Meredith to say that she is going on a different flight. Uh-oh. And that's all she said. You know, this is a big problem in Housewives world. Just dealt with it on Real Housewives in yeah. New York, guys. It's a huge deal. But this and is the opposite. Like- By the way, this is the opposite of New York because in New York, Jenna Lyons goes a day early and flies business class. But this is Whitney Rose going early. And as we see later, she flies Southwest. So yeah. <laughs> it's certain uh, key differences. It's, yeah, it's like one hour early and still flies C class. <laughs> like she didn't even upgrade to the A class. So uh, it's $20, Whitney. It's called the early bird pass. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, no, I'm C26. <sighs> Meredith is like, she's taking another flight. And Lisa goes, that is crazy. Is she coming later then? And Meredith tells us, nah, this is a to me, a trust building trip, and it's definitely kind of on, and definitely kind of annoying that Whitney chose another day on her own. And then we see a close up of the Southwest plane, and I die. <laughs> I feel like the show is doing this shit to us on purpose. We never see them on the plane. They didn't have to do that. They could have pretended they flew private and showed a little private plane. Yeah. But no, they had to out. I was like, what, was there no shot of Spirit Airlines available for you people to take? So good. So now we go to uh, Palm Springs, and we're at the Trixie Motel. It's 9 a.m. So Angie and Whitney arrive. And this place is crazy. It's like all pink. It's very retro. It's like campy, campy retro. Um, and Angie's like, this is like a dollhouse. This is like the dollhouse I got for Electra. But as we all know, to be fair, that was just a stack of pita bread. So Trixie comes out <sighs> and, you know, when I first gave Electra that pita bread house, you know, I turned around <sighs> and then I turned back to say, Electra, don't forget to put butter on that. And she was holding a knife. It was the weirdest <laughs> thing. <laughs> So uh, Trixie comes out and they hug. And Whitney's like, I've known Trixie for quite some time. We've hung out together. We call ca- a bed. Ca- we had a, a bed of ca- collab a bed. together. They called a bed together. She said, <laughs> call a bed. And I said, yeah. And then I just kept dialing B-E-D over and over again until she answered. That was our collab bed. And... She was my friend first, so of course I'm going to come early to my friend's motel. I think it's a funny, cheeky way of marking my territory. (laughs) Okay. Good luck. Um, I also love Trixie because Whitney's like, wow, this place is beautiful. No, she goes, my God, I knew it was pink, but I didn't realize that everything is going to be pink. And Trixie goes, isn't it beautiful here? You look so nice. (laughs) I love the modesty. And Angie's like, yo, look. Gorgeous. And Trixie's like, well, I can't compete with you whores. I mean, God, I mean, I make you look four feet tall, but what can I do? I am famous and have a motel. (laughs) So now everyone else, the other women land in Palm Springs. And then this chaotic, we have a chaotic chaotic interlude. Because now they're all in the women's room. And we hear Lisa going, oh, my God. Does anyone see my ring on on the floor? Does anyone see a ring on the floor? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And Heather, the biggest tattletale is on Heather Cam in the bathroom taking uh, her own video. And she's like, um, I'm hiding out in the bathroom because now Lisa has gone completely unhinged. She came out with her pants down and she was like, just Lisa was screaming about having lost a ring. Yikes. And then we just hear Lisa going, John, it's going to tell me. Has anybody seen my ring? Has anybody seen my ring? My ring? 
is totally gone. I'm like pulling up my jeans and I'm, I feel my rings slipping off my finger. I felt like I caught it. And then I look and I'm like, oh my gosh, my ring is missing. I literally stayed in that bathroom for at least 45 minutes. And like, what a shit way to start the trip. I like can't believe this is happening to my... What a shit way to start the trip. Literally in the shitter, Lisa. So now Lisa comes down to baggage claim and she's still going on. Like, I still can't find it. You know what? I'm going to file a report with security in case I find that. I'm really going to suck. <gasps> it's sentimental. <gasps> and Heather's like, oh, yeah, it's a very big deal. We're so sorry. And Monica's like, we looked everywhere for it. Because Monica's new, so she doesn't know. <laughs> like the level of 10 that these people are always at. So Monica's like yeah. furiously helping her look for this thing. Yeah. And so uh, this ring is worth $60,000. So um, then they're just joking like, oh, it's gone, you know? And like Monica's like, yeah, someone stole it. It's like in a pawn shop somewhere. It's like what Sublime said. It's gone. Yeah, me. And I love that Mary just like victim blames. She goes, well, maybe you didn't wear it. <laughs> I had it on, okay? It was on the plane. Here's a picture of me with it. And then they show a picture. <laughs> they show a selfie of Lisa that she took on the plane of herself dangling her hand like this right next to her face to show off her giant ring. Like it's amazing. Lisa. So <laughs> Mary's like, well, I don't think that ring was worth it. I don't think it was worth $60,000 anyway. So... So now Lisa's calling John. She goes, uh, yeah, it's the big one, too. Yeah, I'm going to file a report with Sakharde to see if they can find it. Yeah, yeah, I don't love that. I don't love that. And then we see her reporting to security, and it's a guy. It's like the crosswalk supervisor. She's like, yeah, but you have to do something about it. <laughs> She's like, okay. Yeah, because it's a ring. Okay. <laughs> it's worth $60,000. <laughs> uh, okay, like, you okay, can cross so. now. Okay, well, I'm not mad. You don't have to say I'm mad. I'm not mad. I'm just worried. It was Santa Manta. <laughs> the, you know, at that airport, they're like, okay, everyone, if you find a $60,000 ring, congratulations. Enjoy. Enjoy the yeah, present. Some queen in Palm Springs, like, girl, I just found Lisa Barlow's $60,000 ring. I'm, I'm going to report it. <laughs> So now they're all climbing in into the into the van. He, Monica's saying that she basically put her hand into the tampon bin to find it and couldn't find it there. And Lisa's like, I'm just like so mad at myself right now. Like a sixty thousand dollar ring just like disappeared. I'm like mad about my ring right now. Uh, and Mary's like, um, at some point you're gonna have to let it go. Did you know that this place serves pizza? Pizza. <laughs> Lisa's like, okay, Mary, but it's still fresh, okay? And Mary's like, Lisa, it's not going to have fun. All she's going to focus on is that ring. Yeah, well, you know what? I've only lost one thing ever, and it was a pair of Chanel sunglasses. And I'm still like, where are they? Where are my Chanel sunglasses? <laughs> mm, this is why they say more money, more problems, girl. And Lisa's like, yeah, it's just hard. It's just very sentimental. Like, there's a great story behind it. Basically, John gave me the ring. Yeah, so it was really beautiful. That's it. That was <laughs> the story. Really about that. <laughs> and Heather's like, well, I feel very sentimental about anything over 10 grand. So I get it. And the producer asks Heather, what's the most expensive thing you've lost? And she's like, um, my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, well, what's in your favor is people might turn it in because they wouldn't see that ring and believe it's even real. And Monica's like, yeah, they're going to think it's a thing. So Lisa goes, hold on, hold on. I'm going to call my jeweler. Okay, one of my jewelers. I trust, they have, they have an NDA. I really trust them. So Monica's like, oh, Lord, I don't, like, I don't have a jeweler. And Lisa's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, uh, and she's talking about, she, Lisa's just going on and on about it being sentimental over and over and over again. And she goes, yeah, you can't really, pre like, uh, it's sentiment, you know, like it's insured, but the sentiment can't be replaced. I'm like, yeah, well, the sentiment was nice, and it's fleeting. It's gone now. You don't need a diamond ring to be sentimental about something, okay? Yeah. But if you if you really believed in sen sentiment, you would tie a trash tie, a twisty trash tie around your finger and be like, this represents my love for John because we're so sentimental. You know, the other ring might as well have been garbage compared to our love. So Monica's like, what the hell? I mean, how sentimental can it be if she's already on the phone with her jeweler? I had my hand in tampons in a public <laughs> restroom <laughs> this is why i don't have sixty thousand dollar rings although mom i have to admit something 
I went to I went to Water Creek and I bought a sixty thousand dollar ring. I just wanted to fit in. <laughs> and Lisa's like, Yeah, but your rings are pretty though. She's like, Yeah, but they're not sixty thousand dollars. And you see Monica just like through this whole experience. You see Monica starting to get really, really pissed. Like yeah. she goes from being really helpful and really sweet to Lisa just nonstop whining, and you just see Monica starting to be like, "Oh, I'm gonna ruin your life." So, <laughs> so now we go back to the motel, and Angie and 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 Whitney are waiting, and and you know there's they're 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 kind of like they're ready to pick out their rooms, you know. And Angie's saying, like, you know, that she's like, well, the other girls, they don't know I'm coming. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. She just wasn't invited. And Trixie just, like, stifles a laugh. And he, uh-huh. and she's like, she's like, oh, it's not a bad thing. She just wasn't invited. She's like, Trixie's like, you idiots. <laughs> the way you're trying to just, like, sell this. <laughs> and uh, Whitney's like, but I wasn't told I couldn't bring a guest. Well, you know, drag is illegal in Tennessee. So guess what? We should do whatever we want. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> well, given that the time of this trip is the way, the theme of this trip is building and trust and bonding, bringing Andy as a surprise, I'm fully aware that I'm like poking the bear and lighting a match and putting it in the fire. And throwing caution at wind and <laughs> crumbling cookies. <laughs> oh no, I spilled milk on the bear that was on fire. I put one hand in my bush, but then there were two other hands in my bush. Wait, the bear, the bear's in a house, and I threw a stone at the house, and it was on fire. The glass house is on fire with the broken window. <laughs> but if we're gonna build trust, we have to burn down the houses. And build brick houses at the YMCA. Uh, Whitney, you're just doing <laughs> really weird lyrics from the 70s now. Oh. Burning down the house. <laughs> so they're shown the hotel. Trixie's like getting her uh, her tour in, you know. And so the, we see the rooms. And it looks really funky and really cute at this hotel. It's fun. And Trixie's like, um, so which one do you like? And Whitney's like, well... Wouldn't the biggest room go to the hostess? And Trixie's like, well, that would probably be the most diplomatic thing to do. She's like, but I came first to pick my room, so dot, dot, dot. Yeah, and we don't really know what happens there. But then the van, meanwhile, the van, everyone, I don't know why it's taking them to t- drive so long from the airport to this motel. I don't know. The motel is definitely in Palm Springs. It's not like in Palm Desert. They're in this van for so long. And like that airport is close to everything so she basically everyone's like has anyone heard from whitney no all she did was saying that she's coming and she's taking a different flight okay and then we go back to angie and she's like i didn't even tell lisa i was coming imagine meredith's face when she sees me the one person you didn't want here is here ha 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 there are other dynamics i did not think about like is Heather going to be mad? Ew. Ew. <laughs> these two are such dopes. First of all, they're sitting there. They're both in these, you know, they're in the pool. And they're both wearing these, like, pink sunglasses. Whitney has, like, little heart sunglasses. And nobody's coming. They were expecting to, like, get in the pool. People come. It's just yeah. a big surprise. But nothing's happening. So every time they cut back to them, they're just like, oh, yeah? Well, guess what? Then... They're going to come, but then they're going to be like, wait a minute, what are you doing here? It's going to be so good. (laughs) Because they don't know that the women spent an hour at the airport looking for Lisa's ring. So the entire time they're waiting, they're like, I saw the itinerary. I know they're about to walk in any minute now. (laughs) No one's walking in. So then um, back in the van... um, Monica offers a chip to Lisa. She's like, she's like, do you want a chip? So she like hands the bag over Mary, and Mary's like, uh, uh, can you not give chips over my clothes? I hate crumbs. I hate crumbs. Like, Sorry. And she's yeah, I don't like crumbs on my clothes. Oh, uh, no chips for Mary. Got it. So then we cut back to Whitney and Andy at the pool, and Whitney's like, you know, the good thing about being little girls, we're not 
old hags. Ha ha. And Angie's like, we're not old hags and bitches either. We're happy girls. Yeah, we're happy, not old hags, because we're little girls who are not bitches. Yeah, we're 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 non miserable, unhaggy. They're like just trying to yes and each other, but like failing miserably. It just miserably. keeps going. It's so funny. And Mary's like, I t- uh, Mary's like, I just want to get where we're going already. And um, Mary has said for the fifth time, all I know is that she's taking a separate flight. How many times do I have to say this in this van? So back to Whitney. You know what? This is going to be a fun surprise. <laughs> Is that bitchy for me to say that? And Angie's like, I am prepared for God knows what with her. And so they go inside to change. And now the van's approaching. And Lisa's like, hi. Oh, my God, this place is so bad. And you think this could be like this moment where they're going to like walk in and it's be a confrontation. Like, here we are. Okay, well, hold on. There's a gate code. Hold on. It's three, <laughs> three, four. Oh, it's not working. Okay, wait. It doesn't One, work. nine. Nine. You have to press two of those numbers together. Okay, wait, 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 hold on. Okay, three. Let me try one nine. No, it's three. Nine. We're coming in. One, <gasps> nine, try three, sixty thousand. Try sixty thousand. Six, six zero zero. Can't wait to walk into this motel. I'm sure there's nothing <laughs> on the other. So it's three and then three. We better get ready two. to jump out. Here they come. Mm. Well, it's gonna be T O D T L E R. Is there an asterisk? Is there? Do we have? Are you? Oh, you're holding it upside down. That's not. A, it's a not. Okay, nine, one, one. Meanwhile, Whitney and Angie have just gone inside. Like they, <laughs> this whole <laughs> thing has been bungled. The whole thing just completely ruined. Finally, the girls come in. They've just gone inside, and so there's no, there's no big surprise. It's what a funny thing. fucking episode! Oh my god, this show is so good. Dying of this is how you do a Real Housewives show. This, this and Miami are showing you how it's done. And honestly, Orange County is too. But really, this show and Miami are really like this is the template. This is the template that Bravo should be following. Very good. Well, you know, so much of it is just casting too. It's like finding True. the right people. You have to find the right people to do it. And I think what they really did well this year was casting. I mean, I think Angie's ridiculous, but she's the kind of ridiculous this show needs, you know? Yeah. So I, I even agree with that. I think it's been just great. Love it. And it really gives me hope because like I've said a million times, I'm always worried that this is everything's just going to end. But you know what? There's still plenty of life left in these shows. There's life. I'm loving it, honey. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. This has been really fun. Uh, first two-hour recap. Our first uh, two-parter sh- recap of the season for Salt Lake City. Wow, Biggie. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Talk to day. you next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, she's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleone. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Roo Roo La Roo. The Bay Area Betches, Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Craftin's ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or... 
You can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey 